Jupiter at Night is filmed before a live internet audience. Hello everyone and welcome to Jupiter at Night. Beta 8 is what we're calling it. And this episode was filmed on July 13th, 2010. Right? Yeah. I think so. I was there. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. And uh, before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to our dudes over at NASA Games. These guys contacted me via Twitter today. The magic of Twitter. You mean our good friends of the show over at NASA? They are our good friends now, <laughs> whether they cool. know it or not. And it, <laughs> exactly. we did, you know, a quick little review on their their game Moonbase Alpha. Yeah, like two or three, three episodes. Yeah, three ago. episodes ago, I think. Or something. And uh, so they contacted me. They wanted a transcript, and I was just totally geeking out. I'm ready to give them whatever they want um, because when I was a kid. Um, I used to watch, you know, those game shows on Nickelodeon yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Like, uh, I think Double Dare did it. Yeah. And there were a couple others where the grand prize, if you won the game for today, was a trip to NASA's space Ooh. camp in, in uh, Florida. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I watched that show every single day, and every single time I was like, Mom, I want to go to space camp. Yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> and now cool. I'm an adult and could probably find a way to afford it. So were they, were they happy with the review? I don't know. Oh, they ha- oh okay. They haven't written back, so they maybe they aren't. They heard, yeah. And we like a transcription, so we know what to sue you for. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. Well, tonight we're going to be talking about the topic of caffeine. Blah! Um, now, I should give a little disclaimer. Uh, we're just a couple of guys on the internet. We're taking information that other people that are on the internet have put out there, mm-hmm. and then we're translating their translation to knowledge and moving it and passing it on to you. But it's science, right? It so should be like the fundamental science math be, of knowledge. It should be right. Right. Because it's science. Because it's math, science, yeah. caffeine. Mm-hmm. Chemical math. Uh, so I thought we all are probably, at least it's kind of the uh, trendy thing to do for people in uh, the internet culture is to be uh, extreme consumers of caffeine in some cases, but generally moderate consumers of yeah. caffeine. At least moderate. I don't. Both of, you are, uh, both of you and I are fans of the caffeine. Yeah, I don't honestly know any geek friends that are like abhorrent of caffeine. You know, there are a few that have... Intolerances, you know, some, or yeah, very light because it is, you know, it is a, a caffeine stim, a yeah, a chemical stimulant. stimulant right. Some of them can't just really handle that. Wuss. Well, is it a chemical stimulant? Let's talk about that. Uh, so this information comes from Lifehacker. Uh, Lifehacker had an awesome post up this morning. Way to go, Lifehacker! About how caffeine actually does affect your brain. Like, how does that process work when you ingest caffeine? And uh, this is pretty interesting stuff. Uh, one of the things they talk about is. Uh, how the caffeine really works. It doesn't actually wake you up physically itself. And this, it, is, this is what I found interesting. Go ahead. Well, now, I, I read this article. Yeah. Which, you know, I have to do because this is a show that I'm supposed to be smart on. Um, I honestly thought for a long time, and I knew there was some sort of other chemical reaction going on, but mm-hmm. I thought one of the primary things that caffeine did was that it would help thin your blood and just make your circulation well, you know, work better that. so I'll that your brain that. gets more blood and stuff like that. That is an interesting aspect, but you and you kind of have it in a way, but not not quite what it is. Oh. Um, but so I'm right in a way, but not. So here's what it is. So uh, as your neuron now, this is my rough understanding, but when you're awake, when your neurons are firing off every time you have an idea, these like your neurons are going off in your head, and as they fire off in your brain, they're actually releasing like little neuron poop. They're, they're just pooping a little bit every time they puff a little poop. Every How time dare they? Shoot. Yeah. And uh, there's these receptors. Uh, there's a bunch in your brain and a whole bunch throughout your whole body that uh, this neuron poop, it happens to be the exact molecule structure, molecular structure that needs to fit into these receptors. And that, as uh, enough of these receptors. That's the adenosine, right? That's the adenosine, exactly. There's this funny little cartoon Yep, here. yep. And uh, if you scroll up a little bit there for the uh, video folks, um, the uh, if you they have uh, the molecular structures there and mm-hmm. caffeine has a very similar structure to this neuro poop and uh, what happens is caffeine is able to fit into these same receptors that these neuro poops would go into. They plug your toilet. Well, no, they're plugging your brain up because the idea yeah. is is your as your neurons fire throughout the day they release these what were they called adenosine adenosines and they would sort of. Give your body the signals by making enough connections eventually in these little sockets that your body's starting to get a little tired. Maybe you want to slow down a little bit. But what caffeine does is it comes in and fills all of these little connections up. So, that these, so the adenosine doesn't. So this adenosine cannot attach. So it doesn't actually naturally stimulate, stimulate you. It, it just, just prevents, prevents the stuff that makes you feel sleepy. And then it's up to your body's own natural factories to wake you up. 
So this is why a lot of huh. times energy drinks will then throw in like the ginseng or whatever else they'll throw in to sort of kick natural you. chemicals. Yeah, the vitamins. And, exactly. Yeah. Because now that this, this these receptors have been blocked, now all the other chemicals chemicals can do their job. That's that's much now, more than I thought was going on. Uh, yeah, it is actually <laughs> quite a bit of information. Uh, the other thing that's really kind of neat about it is a current TV did a uh, interesting video study on the actual brain effects of what? caffeine. And this kind of plays into what you were talking about a little bit. And they talk about how they took this gal who uh, is what she considers herself an average coffee drinker, two to four cups of coffee a day. Um, and I think uh, that's a little on the high side. Well, I, two is, I, I would consider two an yeah. average coffee um, drinker. And so they took her and they said, okay, come in. And uh, come in this morning and don't drink any coffee before you come in. And what we're going to do is we're going to put you in a machine and we're going to scan your brain. Okay. And they put her in this machine and it was funny too because she was falling asleep. She could barely keep her eyes up. But, you know, because they're doing little tests and they wanted to image her brain as they do these yeah. tests on her. Like and pre-coffee, exactly. post-coffee. They, they were going to they were gonna do pre-coffee and post-coffee. Mm-hmm. And what they found out when they scanned her brain was that uh, the blood to her brain was really really intense there was a, a large amount of blood going to her brain more than what would be comfortable for the normal human brain and uh the reason that they that they have for that is when you consume caffeine it sort of drain brain it does drain brain a little bit probably because it thins your blood or whatever it is so the amount of blood that's in her brain goes down and the reason why that feels better is because the brain is like the master at normalization and just making it all cool. So, you know, if you're a meth addict or a <laughs> caffeine addict, eventually it stops having its effect because the brain has learned how to compensate. So what's her brain oh. doing? Her brain is sending more blood to her brain to compensate. So when she stops having caffeine, her brain is still it's sending still blood. still compensating. So there's pressure that builds up. So there's a physical pressure in your brain when you have ca- so caffeine So in a way, withdrawals. maybe not like to a major degree, but she was actually... Physically addicted yeah. to her morning coffee. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, and that's basically what it is. It's a body's and it all it condition. Takes is, all it takes is about uh, two weeks to twelve days of uh, regular consumption of caffeine for this effect to start, for this normalization effect to start happening fully. Hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, interesting little side note. A lot of times when people come out of like um, anesthesia where they've been down for a long time for mm-hmm. surgery, they'll have headaches. Right. Yeah. And uh, frequently, the reason that they have had headaches. Is uh, because they're on, they're having caffeine withdrawals because they were drinking a lot before they went under before they went under and then while they were under they didn't have any caffeine yeah and uh, <clears throat> and, and doctors often say you know this is your opportunity to wean yourself if you ride this out for a few more days mm-hmm. for some people though it's as much as ten days they say yeah ten days of headaches and I've but I've been through it I tried to clean out I tried to go clean <laughs> it was rough have you tried that ever. And- I think so. I, I, you know, I've been drinking coffee since I was twelve. Yeah. So, I, but I've gone through long periods of not having any. I'm kind of a jerk in real life, anyway, though. So yeah. I think that if it made me irritable, I wouldn't really notice. I, for the most part, you no. Know, well, I just randomly punch people on the street all the time. That's normal, <laughs> it right? Doesn't matter if you're sleepy or not. No. <laughs> I, uh, I will sometimes go a couple of days without having any caffeine, and then realize, oh, I haven't had any caffeine. But that's so rare for me now. Hmm. At most, I'll sometimes go without having an energy drink. You know, I th- I'm going to do it as an experiment. Yeah, right. No, I'm having a root beer right now, which yeah. most of you don't know doesn't has, have caffeine. Has no caffeine, unless it's Barks. It's interesting. We'll put a Barks link, is the one with uh, bite. We'll put a link in the show notes of the caffeine levels. Well, no, this is a really good time to do it. Actually, well, I ran out, I ran out of creamer this morning too. I had the last. Oh, week. you're gonna okay. So you're gonna go sans caffeine. I'm gonna try it for a few pop? days. No, I'm gonna go without caffeine. Wow. Because of this show. I'm so then you need to for... refer to the list in our show notes. Yes, I will. Because even decaf has a couple milligrams. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to, I mean, even chocolate has a little caffeine. In it. Right. So no, I, I think I could with, abstain for two or three days. And, you know, if I'm a dick on the rest of the shows this week, you guys know why. <laughs> Experiment <laughs> failure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some of our favorite caffeine items, All right. right? All right. Uh, now, Think Geek, right? Everybody loves Think Geek. These guys are ah. awesome for a, a, a whole multitude of reasons. But today we're going to focus on one of their subcategories. They have an entire corner of their site dedicated to caffeine it's massive yeah they have like a caffeine uh they, probably the largest caffeine selection i've ever seen yeah so let's pick a couple of our favorite caffeinated items can i go first sure sure now mine's two items but it's basically the same thing in okay. two different forms okay it's, um shower shot caffeinated soap does this really work yes how can it work because caffeine can be absorbed through the pores in your skin 
Now, really? they say the best way to do it is actually to lather yourself up, your entire body, lather it up and let it sit before you rinse it, rather than, you know, like if you usually take a shower. Is it safe to wash your junk and stuff? I don't see why not. I, well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, what if you're... I mean, it's a full... It's been but you've been featured putting on caffeine, tech like, TV, right on NBC, your junk. CNN, Good Morning America, Washington Post. All these people have have done stories uh, about this stuff. I, I don't think it would still be on the market if it was hazardous to your junk. Yeah, but what if you're jerking your... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm oh, just, you do that in the shower, no, too? No, no, no. No, no. no, no neither do I. No. <laughs> no, I don't. But I'm just saying, you got to think somebody's going to do that, and that could lead to some serious problems. Now, they say that if you if you use it correctly, which might mean no junk use, I don't know. They don't have fully instructions Oh, they on do here. say if you use correctly? Yeah. It oh. will include uh, approximately 200 milligrams of caffeine through your skin. That's more than two cups of coffee. Whoa, and I'm a huge multitasker. In fact, I was recently considering taking up brushing my teeth in the shower just to save time. I shaved in the shower for a while just to shave time. Uh, save time. Shave a little time. <laughs> but it, the mirror I got wouldn't stay on fog. Yeah, so. I know. I have one of those BS no fog yeah. mirrors, too. They don't actually no fog. No. No. Uh, so the chat room thinks that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the chair room has some. The chair room has some interesting uh, comments on exactly what oh, uh, masturbating with caffeine soap might do. All right, my, <laughs> my wait, no, no, no. I have two because oh, it also comes oh, okay. as a caffeinated body wash. Oh, check that out. Which is you know if you want if you like using a nice loofah or something in the shower, you can get it so you can squirt it on. Nice. Um, it has a much lower dosage though. Now what I what I was gonna buy, mm-hmm. uh, but my I, know, I think my wife yelled at me because I still have a pack uh, above the oven, but it's not the same <laughs> brand. It's caffeinated gum. Now this isn't. I'm just gonna give this an honorable mention, okay? Okay. Uh, but if you guys are familiar with uh, Think Geeks caffeine section, then you might know that uh, they have like a beverages section at Think Geek, mm-hmm. and in there they have a couple of different assorted coffees. Oh, do they? Some high caffeinated coffees, Ooh. including the and I don't know exactly the pronunciation of this word. It's Skevet C I. Oh, civet. Civet. Yeah. Civet. Oh, I've heard of this stuff. Crap yeah. choice coffee. Crap choice. <laughs> um, and and there's a reason it's called crap choice uh-huh. uh, because it comes from. And there's a crap. reason that it's higher concentration of uh, caffeine. Yeah. So this is uh, this is coffee that is produced from the droppings of an animal. Poop. This um, is poop. And because that the, you put in your mouth, the animal will eat like the coffee beans. Well, because they come in like coffee a, beans or something like that. Well, when they fall off, they're overripe, and yeah. you don't want to really yeah, overripe. Eat those. That's what it is. Um, but they, you know, coffee comes in a, in a, like a husk. Yeah. And the civet eats the husk and digests the husk and poops out the bean. Right. Which, because it's been on the vine longer, although it has a, a different taste, has higher caffeine concentration. And also, there's some sort of like partially digestive system of mm-hmm. softening it. Right. Gross, but it's supposed to be a rocking cup of coffee. And a lot of people say that the taste is, is more bold, more yeah, rich, more rich, yeah, and creamy. Yeah. I would love to know if anyone out there has it, ever it's tried. It's a bit this. nutty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is definitely a bit. Nutty. I didn't even have corn. <laughs> oh, Jeremy, no. This this episode is definitely earning its at night title. I think. This how did how did caffeine get so nasty? What did that? I blame happen? the chat room. Yeah, it is guys, the chat room's fault. Guys, I know it. We'll put a, a link to Think Geek's caffeine um, yeah, store on here. They've also got shirts and mugs and stuff with like the, the chemical composition of caffeine listed on it. It's yeah. kind of cool stuff. And then, of course, keeping I love it Think in Geek. the caffeine uh, spirit with a tech angle, uh, most of you out there have probably heard recently that uh, Starbucks has transitioned all their stores to uh, free Wi-Fi. I didn't know that this was a story, actually, when I first came out. I was like, right. is this old? Yeah, I mean, because a lot of Tully's has had free Wi-Fi. A lot of other coffee places, have, like McDonald's, has had free Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, so the fact that these guys were one of the few people that had a paywall up around their Wi-Fi and then all mm-hmm. of a sudden decided to turn it on, that to me isn't so much the story. I guess to me more of the story is in that, um, well, gee, Wi-Fi is just gotten on a massive increase of deployment. Well, you said even, even driving out to my place in the boonies. Boonies. There's like four or five open yeah, Wi-Fi yeah. networks that yeah. you can connect to on the way. And now if you figure how many, how many places are there Starbucks or Starbucks everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's getting to the point where I just I don't know if soon if people couldn't just run Fring or Skype on their cell phones maybe they won't even need a cell phone data they were trying uh, to plan. encourage me to get well why not an iPhone without a plan and see if it would work why couldn't you I mean save yourself the contract save yourself the data right get uh-huh. Skype yeah and then use like uh, Google Talk or something for your sure. text messages and, sure yeah this is uh, the interesting thing to me about this as well is the fact that. Um, 
this is not really a story. And yeah. um, maybe this is totally tangential, but I'm kind of tired of big companies like this being splattered all over the press just because they're doing what all the underdogs just because they're a, a big company. Basically. Because all of their competition. Yeah, I know. Me too. Me too. Although the I, same thing does occasionally happen with Google and Apple and Microsoft. Well, I guess all a lot. Time. But the, but I think the sub story of the big story is that massive now deployment of Wi-Fi. And that is cool. And as a tech person, I'm excited about that. Yeah, and, and you know, on that subject, I'm going to include in our links in our show notes All along right. with this is a uh, uh, another story I came across. It's very simply how to stay safe on public Wi-Fi. Because mm -hmm. not only w when you connect to a public Wi-Fi terminal, you're not only at risk of the, the normal stuff on the internet, but anybody connected to that specific Wi-Fi network could can yeah it could, could be monitoring your packets or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, could potentially get. Access to your system, and if you have if like you a mail client yourself. on your machine, and you're not using uh, you're not using encryption of or a VPN of some type, mm -hmm. at least take take a look at these uh, recommendations. Over I'm not going to go into on detail here, but it does have tips for both uh, Ubuntu, Windows, and Mac OS. So if you're the type of person that regularly goes to a coffee shop, sits down and plugs into the Wi-Fi, you might want to at least check this out. Mm -hmm. um, just to make sure you're keeping yourself somewhat protected. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll link to that over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. It's a good article, for, by the way. Uh, I did look through the whole thing. It's yeah. Look for uh, Beta 8 of Jupiter at Night. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's just about everything we were going to cover on this episode. Um, oh, no. I'm going to include this, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. The list of the beverages, right? Uh, pretty much. To, you want, is there any kind of you want to jump out before we go? Because the one I found interesting was, you know, these five-hour energy shots? Mm -hmm. uh, five-hour energy shots, those little bottles have 138 milligrams of caffeine. Those tiny little things. So you think you figure your, like your average cup of coffee is somewhere in the 100 milligrams range, mm -hmm. and that little shot has 138. Actually, according... That's... Whoa. I think we just had a trash -a lunch in the next room. I think we did. <laughs> uh, according to this list, a, a caf regular cup, eight-ounce cup of brewed coffee is 108 gram milligrams of, of caffeine. There you go. Pretty interesting list. They have a ton of freaking beverages on there. They've got like the whole alphabet. Yeah. Uh, be beverages I've never even heard of before. Nope. Uh, so we'll link that up in the show notes. Too. Yep. Okay, everyone, we'd love to hear your caffeine habits. Are you a caffeine fiend? Uh, oh, 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 one more thing, too. My favorite personal caffeine beverage of choice at the moment has got to be Guru Energy Drinks. These guys don't advertise anywhere, do they? I don't think so. Darn, I want them on a sponsor. I know. I <laughs> love them. I, what, what's your favorite drink? Or are you totally sans caffeine? Was that a transition period and you had to go through? What was that like? And if the science scared you as much as it, it, okay, it didn't scare me. I'm doing this as purely an experiment, but maybe you want to cut caffeine with me for a few days. We'll oh, check yeah. back. So and, we'll uh, have see how you it goes. and a couple of commenters extremely grumpy for the rest of the week. Uh-huh. Really <laughs> irate. It'll be great. That seems like a great idea. Well, everyone, <laughs> tune in uh, tomorrow, 9 p.m. Pacific, over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. To see me in a very live. bad mood. There you have it. <laughs> and until tomorrow, everyone, we'll see you later.